Hi again, everyone. Jim Knox back with Carla Macias. Welcome back to another edition of the Best Docs Network featuring Forest Park Medical Center San Antonio. You know, Carla, Forest Park Medical Center San Antonio has brought together the best of the best from staff to surgeons to technology and technique. That's what it's all about. And we'll start this morning with one of the best doctors here at Forest Park. Yes, that's right. We will start off with Dr. Jose Barrera, who completely changed an individual's life who was suffering from sleep apnea. Sleep apnea or obstructive sleep apnea is a medical problem whereby the airway is obstructed, meaning that while patients are sleeping, either their palate or their tongue base fall back and obstruct the airway. If sometimes it's a craniofacial problem, the skeleton may be small. Sometimes it has to do with the tissues inside the airway being too large. I had been having headaches during the day. Um, just didn't, I, I work out quite a bit and I didn't, I we didn't feel I was getting the benefits of my workout, I was always tired. My family physician asked me to take a sleep study and it was then uh, discovered that I had sleep apnea. I was wearing a CPAP machine for about two years. It was uncomfortable. It was not something that I enjoyed, but I knew the importance of sleep. As I'm sleeping, I got a panic attack. I'm 45 years old and I'm getting this attack that I've never gotten in my life. And these panic attacks really inhibited him from sleeping and so he'd wake up after struggling and wrestling with the machine all night, very tired, and he had to travel, and he had to go take care of his clients and take care of his workers, and really was uh, not satisfied with this type of treatment. Upon evaluation, we performed an endoscopy, we put a, a small camera in through his nose and looked at his airway, and found that he had obstructive symptoms secondary to both palate collapse as well as tongue-based collapse. And so we offered him a combination therapy to improve his nasal breathing, which included doing nasal reconstruction, doing palate reconstruction, and doing a jaw advancement surgery. He felt that, that surgery could enhance that and felt that I would be a good candidate for the surgery. I told him that from everything that I had read, I felt comfortable having the surgery, and we chose to do the surgery. We performed all these operations for him, and he had a successful outcome. He feels refreshed, he no longer feels uh, stressed like he was before, he sleeps quietly, he wakes up with energy, and he no longer experiences panic attacks. You don't always run across people in this world that truly care, and Dr. Barrera truly cares. Steve has a question for Dr. Christopher Cantrell. How can someone prevent kidney stones? Really the two simple things to help prevent a kidney stone is, is one, you want to keep yourself well hydrated. A lot of people ask me how much water is enough to drink in a day and I, you know, there's no set number but you should really look at your, the color of your urine is the best way to, to follow that. It should have little, little to no color throughout the day. And the other thing is watching your salt intake and living in America, it's very hard to find a low salt diet. If I, I tell my patients if it comes in a bag, box, or a can, it probably has too much salt in it. Forest Park Medical Center is all about helping out in the community as well as around the world as we see one Forest Park Medical Center doctor help out overseas. Every spring, February, March, I try to go down to Honduras. I've been doing it probably for about the last seven years. And I work with a group called Predizon. And we do surgery in the mountains of eastern Honduras on the locals there that can't afford or can't uh, get to health care. They have three or four family practice physicians that live and work in that area. They spend the entire year scheduling or screening these patients and getting them ready for us. And so we get down there and we'll do probably six or seven surgeries a day myself and usually a general surgeon or two. And for the week we'll probably end up doing 40 or 50 surgeries in four or five days. I've had friends that have done mission trips before in medicine and they've been asked me to join them and um, I always tried to find excuses not to go and it just kept getting on me and about eight years ago uh, Predizon approached me and said that 
uh, they needed a gynecologist in eastern Honduras and asked me if I'd be interested. And they said that we uh, have two ORs set up with all the surgical instruments that you'll need and all we need is you to come down and you can do surgery in a modern facility. Uh, and that's all I needed to hear. I said, sign me up. By and large, we are able to take care of the patients in ways that patients are not used to. They do get the surgery done and some of them it, does, it is life changing. They don't have access to surgeons there in Catacomas and the closest surgeon is probably about 150 miles away which by United States standards is not that far, but for people who don't have access to transportation, it might as well be you know, a thousand miles away. So by being down there, we're helping them out and giving them care that, again, they might not otherwise be uh, having access to. Every day we're bombarded with how bad medicine is here in the United States. And to go down to Honduras and see what those people have to endure just to get into I see a doctor or have surgery and, and come back here and realize how blessed we are with the system that we have with the quality of training. As physicians, we need to do something to give back to those that maybe not are as blessed as we are. And so that's been my goal was I want to, I want to practice here in the United States and I want to, to do everything I can for those that are less fortunate. And, uh, so I try to do everything I can to be involved with, you know, charity groups, with nonprofit groups, and try to, to use my medical talents as best I can to help others that are less fortunate. Van Stocks Network featuring Forest Park Medical Center. Welcome to the 21st century of cutting edge medicine. Forest Park Medical Center. Forest Park Medical Center is known for its beautiful facilities and soon there will be one here in San Antonio as early as 2014. Now let's get an update on construction from developers Nick Somerville and Derek Evers. Neil Richards Group has been the exclusive developer for Forest Park Medical Center and San Antonio is our latest and greatest addition. We're situated on top of a hill so it truly acts as a beacon for Forest Park Medical Center San Antonio. It takes on that hill country like feel, which is uh, really one of the fundamental things in, in San Antonio. Forest Park Medical Center San Antonio was designed very much to fit in with the local San Antonio architecture. It drafts themes off of the Texas hill country, so at completion, whenever you pull onto the campus, you're gonna see a lot of heavy stones, a lot of drought tolerant landscape, a lot of neutral colors, some wood and timbers there, as well as some metal and glass. The Forest Park Medical Center San Antonio campus has 80,000 square feet of available medical office space. It's Class A space and it's on campus. Uh, it's right there at the front door of the hospital, so physicians who are interested in relocating their practice there can really reduce their commute time and, and just go to one single location on a weekly basis and they can see their patients for exams and preoperative workups in the medical office space that they lease. And then on their other days, they can go right there to uh, the hospital and do their surgical cases there in, in one location, as opposed to having to traverse all over greater San Antonio. Forest Park Medical Center campus consists of the Surgical Specialty Hospital, which is 154,000 square feet there's 12 operating rooms and a total of 54 patient beds. It also has a 470 car parking garage as well as 80,000 square foot Class A medical office building. Current progress in San Antonio on the construction side is still going exceptionally well. We've had great weather and we're on target still to complete in May of 2014. Concrete pours are occurring daily right now. Our first elevated concrete pour was last Saturday, and we'll have one per week leading up to top out, which is in uh, October. Did you know Forest Park Medical Centers utilize a paging system similar to those found in many restaurants today? The paging system notifies patients' family members as to their location and status while undergoing surgery at Forest Park. The system also allows the surgeon to contact the family members to update them on their loved one's surgery.
For more information about Forest Park Medical Center in San Antonio, please visit our website, bestdogsnetwork.com, and click on that Forest Park Medical tab. That's right, Carla. Forest Park Medical Center, San Antonio, of course, your destination to better health. Right now, our destination is our next Forest Park doctor. It's Dr. Ramon Reyes. Shortly after uh, retiring from the military, I um, went to one of the free ultrasound scanning things. I'm not sure what they call them. The uh, physician on site stopped the test and said I needed to seek a physician because of some blockage. Frank Cassidy is a patient that has cardiovascular risk factors. Cardiovascular disease is probably one of the leading causes of death and disease in the United States. It's what's causing strokes, it's what's causing heart attacks, it's what's causing chest pains, it's what's causing amputations. And Frank Cassidy was born in a family where, where every member of his family either has been dead by age 50 or have had a heart attack or a stroke in their 50s. Dr. Reyes said that I am on the road to a heart attack, a stroke, didn't sugarcoat it and said my last warning sign was a quarter mile behind me. And uh, in my family, we call that a God slap. And I went home, talked over with my wife, and we did what we had to do. And over the last two or three years, we have engaged in the care of Frank Cassidy to the point that he has lost around 30 to 40 pounds. His lipids have improved significantly. He has a normal heart, and he's probably the only member of the family that because of the advanced cardiovascular management that we do in this office, that doesn't have cardiovascular disease. It gave me a map, it gave me a, a strip map to better health, and the quality of life is just almost back to a couple of decades ago. Things are looking very well. We not only did the basic cardiovascular assessment, we did the advanced cardiovascular assessment, all in the same patient center. Life is very good. I'm extremely fortunate and blessed to have met Dr. Reyes. Forest Park Medical Center is not only known for its beautiful facilities, but also its fine cuisine. Now let's take a look into the dining experience at Forest Park Medical Center. One great thing about Forest Park is that they include the dining aspect or the food aspect as far as the patient care. Not only do they have great dietitians on site to make sure that the dietary needs are met for the patients, but they also consider the patient's family's needs as well. Um, let's face it, sometimes you're in a hospital, this facility, six, seven hours, if not longer, sometimes overnight, sometimes two or three days. And it's not the typical food. Uh, we do everything from scratch, which means that we do everything from the starting point all the way to the finished product. We do pork tenderloin, we do roasted chickens, we do gourmet pizzas. We even do some things similar like grandma's meatloaf, but it's, everything's made from scratch. We follow recipes, nothing comes out of a can. Our sauces are all made from scratch. When you walk into our dining facility, our dining facility here name is Cafe 114. It feels like a real cafe. You don't walk into it and it's the old type of tray line service here. Every single day the menu changes. So for example, one day you may have a carbon station with a prime rib on it. And the next day on that carbon station may be a baked potato bar. And the plate itself is a work of art. It's just not something that's piled on the plate and sent to the guests or sent to the patient. It's a work of art because, you know, you may not always come in here where you just own a clear liquid diet. You can actually have surgery where you can eat regular food. So we have to take those cases and we want them to feel like, you know what, this is unbelievable. This is not hospital food. We won't ever want to be stereotyped or categorized as hospital food. We are a cafe dining facility. You can get fresh grilled salmon. We have fresh tuna here. We have a fish of the week. We have grilled pork chops you can get, grilled chicken. Um, along with that, you can have that grill, make your salad, give it to one of my grill cooks and we'll put it on the salad for you. It really starts with Chef Jason Douglas, this guy, um, is absolutely amazing when it comes to food. He is truly an artist when it comes to the culinary aspect of it. He has an eye for making your food look so 
pretty and, and edible at the same time that you don't want to touch it because it looks so great. That's one element about dining service I don't have to worry about because I know when he's there um, that the guests, our patients, are going to get the absolute best that he has to offer every single day. So what we try to do is we, we try to be innovative with our food, um, very cost effective, but most importantly, we want a great quality of food. I have this saying that if it's not done in the spirit of excellence, we won't serve it. Fast Docs Network featuring Forest Park Medical Center. Forest Park Medical Center, extraordinary in every way. I had uh, two surgical procedures at Forest Park. I had bariatric surgery uh, in September and I've had my back surgery in uh, April of this year. The staff at Forest Park was uh, cordial, uh, respectful, uh, the checking in process was done efficiently, there were no surprises, they had called me the evening before to remind me of what I needed to do to prepare myself. I sat in the waiting room a minimal amount of time before I was called back to begin the pre-op procedure. In both cases, um, I was in on one day and I was out the very next day and felt very comfortable during the process. Just walking in, it, it did seem like a five-star hotel, but we were greeted at the desk by at the concierge. They gave my husband a pager and explained to him what the paging system was like. They would send him a text how I was doing in surgery, where I was at, everywhere in the hospital. He was able to see at any screen where I was. And so it gave him a great sense of comfort knowing that, you know, he was being, even though it was electronic communication, that still somebody was letting him know um, as I moved through the progression of um, the surgery area, the recovery area, back to my room, he knew. It was incredible how um, the staff made sure that my family was taken care of while I was being taken care of. I felt like I was in a six-star hotel. The service was great. The people were wonderful. Um, I really felt that I was treated as, as, a, as if they really cared about me and, and wanted to help me. and and get me um, to start recovering quickly. And I felt really good being there. I didn't feel like I was in a sterile uh, environment. It just felt homey. And that was nice because, you know, when you're not feeling good, it's good to be in a place that feels like home. And it was a place that felt like home. And my husband was able to stay overnight with me. The nurses, the staff, everyone seemed really happy and, and, and ready to help you out where I've been to hospitals where it just wasn't like that. The rooms at Forest Park were extremely clean. The exterior, when you first see Forest Park, it, it does look like a, a five-star hotel. Everything about it was a, a good experience. John has a question for Dr. Leroy Jones. Do over-the-counter medicines, as seen on TV, work on erectile dysfunction? Generally, uh, these medicines uh, don't work. Um, they're not studied. They're usually herbal supplements. You have to be wary of, uh, because what's on the bottle, the label actually may not be in the medicine, because they're not approved by the FDA. And so, and they're oftentimes expensive, so they're generally not recommended as a treatment option for erectile dysfunction. And there is no medicine to cause penile enlargement. For more information on the Forest Park Medical Doctors, please visit our website, bestdocsnetwork.com, and click on the Forest Park Medical tab. Now let's take a look at another doctor, pain specialist, Dr. Arnold DeLeon. Over the course of my life, starting when I was age 24, I've had four back surgeries, uh, two on my low back and two in my neck. And I've had a total of uh, 10 fusions in my spine. And after my last uh, neck surgery, my neurosurgeon recommended that I look into having the spinal cord stimulator implant, at least the trial procedure, to see if that would help alleviate some of the low back pain that I was having. And so that's when I called uh, Dr. DeLeon's office to see about a consult. 
Spinal cord stimulation is a, a relatively a newer uh, pain management technique. Um, it involves uh, implanting two electrodes in the epidural space. Those electrodes send signals to the spinal cord um, that mask or um, take place of the pain. So instead of feeling pain, the patient will feel a, a pleasant tingling sensation in their areas of pain. Usually the patient will undergo a trial, almost like a test drive, so that they're able to uh, have temporary electrodes, they walk around for three or five days, do their normal activities. If they get good pain relief, then we uh, would discuss implanting a permanent stimulator. In, in January, I had I came and visited with Dr. De Leon, and he looked at my films and, and my history and said that I looked like the ideal candidate for uh, the, certainly the trial to see if, if that would uh, be of, of benefit to me. And we scheduled that for uh, early January. I had the trial implant and had it for about five or six days. It definitely was helpful. And then went through the paperwork to have the permanent implant, and then I had the permanent implant in March. Uh, it was a day surgery where he uh, was able to go home that same day. Uh, he had two small incisions, one over the midline of his back and one over uh, the, the uh, battery site, which is usually on the upper buttock. Um, did very well post-operatively, was able to get great coverage, um, and has, has just done really well afterwards. My quality of life definitely improved. Dr. De Leon is terrific. He really listens. I think Dr. De Leon is one of those rare doctors who really has a lot of compassion for his patients. I think he's got to be one of the best in the San Antonio area. One of the priorities that we have as an office, as family physicians, is to associate ourselves with the best hospital delivery systems in the city. And I feel, and my organization feel, that Forest Park represents that for the city of San Antonio. This is the opportunity to give patients the exact care I'd want for myself, for my wife, for my children, um, and do it in a setting that they will find charming, relaxing, and and restful, um, which we can't always say about trips to the hospital. I was very excited to be approached by Forest Park to be part of this uh, organization because they really care about quality. They really care about getting the best possible people involved so that an, they appreciate a proper assessment of patients so that they can do the right job in that OR suite. Uh, their nurse to physician ratio for those patients who are in the hospital, phenomenal. No other institution has anything like that. I'm really looking forward to working with them here in San Antonio because this is premier medicine at its best, where you can really do what's in the best interest of the patient without interference from outside sources. I think the uh, idea of having a, a hospital run by doctors is a, is a good one. Um, I think that you commonly hear um, uh, complaints by doctors that, that the rules are made by people who don't understand what happens in a hospital or what happens with caring for patients. And I think that with this model, you're going to have physicians who are, are able to, to help um, fix those kinds of problems. Um, and I think it's going to make uh, not only for a better patient experience, but for better patient safety. So it's an honor for me to associate my organization to Forest Park organization because I believe that in San Antonio, in the hospital system, with the name and the quality of what Forest Park is creating, is needed for our patients. And to be successful, primary care physicians have to partner with the best hospitals in town. And Forest Park, in my opinion, going to be one of those organizations. Patrick has a question for Dr. Arnold DeLeon. What kind of activities can I do after having a spinal cord stimulator implanted? Depending on what kind of spinal cord stimulator you had implanted, if it was a laminotomy lead versus the uh, epidural leads, um, we usually ask patients for the first four to six weeks to uh, 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 kind of watch out for repetitive bending or moving, uh, almost to kind of take it easy for four to six weeks. Usually after about four to six weeks, you can, they can resume their normal activities. Um, I've had some patients that go and ski every year and don't have a problem. Um, I've had you know, some patients that 
play sports and do other things like that. Um, knowing, however, you know, there is a risk anytime uh, you were to take a jar and fall or a hit or, any, or anything like that. But uh, uh, the idea behind the spinal cord stimulator is we're trying to get patients to become more active and to be able to be more active with less pain. So that's what it's designed for. Well, it's a culture of caring, and that comes down to the people that occupy the, the buildings and use the technology, the wonderful processes that we've developed for them. Um, but people really make the difference. For Forest Park, we look for people that have got great experience and great skills, um, but we're also looking for people that are passionate about what they do, that are compassionate, uh, empathetic people, great nurses, great respiratory therapists, great imaging staff. Um, the greeter at our front desk is warm and bright and welcoming and she smiles. And even if you come in and you're uncertain and scared and she's the first face that you see, you will immediately melt your fears away because of the engagement. Just the smile and the compassion that comes through. And it's not something you can, you can put on. It's an empathy that people have or don't have. It's one of the traits that we seek. It's a passion about what they do. It's an excellence, it's an attitude. And it, it's every single person. And so we, we look for that, we search for it. It's not always easy to find, but when you've got it, every single person that goes into the patient's room, from our environmental services folks, all the way through the clinical team, um, everybody knows what their job is. They know they're an integral part of the team. And our environmental fo folks are the front line of our infection control. Their role is incredibly important. It makes a difference in our care and how they carry themselves throughout their day and present themselves to our patients is, is very important. And it's all about being compassionate, smiling, being optimistic. In South Lake, you know, we built our team of oh, 150 people over a relatively short period of time. When you're opening a new facility, the wonderful opportunity you have is you get to build that culture. Uh, it's not there yet. There's, there's not a culture there. There's a culture for the organization. But when you build that hospital and every single person that you hire, you have to be very careful and selective that you're hiring people that are of the culture of caring, compassion, excellence that you really want to continue for Forest Park. So we're creating more than just excellent healthcare outcomes, we're creating memories, which is a strange way to think about what we do. We're, we're healing people, and, and those are tasks, and it's, it's clinical, but we're also creating potentially memories, experiences for people uh, that they're going to they're gonna talk about and remember, and we want to create an experience that is memorable in every possible good way. And that has to do again with our people. How were they treated? Beyond the clinical care and experience, the outcome is excellent. But the thing that's memorable to people is not necessarily how I was put to sleep in anesthesia. It's going to be about how was I treated as a person? Did I walk away feeling like the patient that told me she feels like a princess and this place is like a spa? They had an experience and that's what they will remember. It's the Disney of healthcare. That'll do it. That'll wrap up another edition of the Best Knox Network featuring Forest Park Medical Center San Antonio, your destination to better health. And of course, Carla, for folks out there who want to find out more information about Forest Park Medical Center, head to the website bestknoxnetwork.com and click on that Forest Park Medical Center tab. For questions or comment, please email us at info at We would love to hear from you. So long, everybody, and we'll see you next week.